Hello everyone, another delightful day out, a lovely grey, windy, wet day today, fun, and I'm here in the house today with Blue, hello Blue, say hello, <laughs> that's not what I meant, um, yeah, so I did a, an impromptu video yesterday, God, <laughs> With, without blue, which was a lot more peaceful, I thought you might just want tickles today. I thought you might just want tickles. You're molting everywhere. So I did a video yesterday talking about the commoditization of cacao and I had some thoughts on it. And as always, uh, I start percolating my thoughts. Uh, new thoughts come. So my new thoughts for today um, more focused around and I've noticed myself doing this and I don't I don't think I mean it as a general thing when I work with my, my cacao I do often say it's the best and what I mean by that is it's so far been the best for me it doesn't mean that it's the only one and it doesn't mean that I won't you know go somewhere else energetically eventually so a little bit like that whole gin fiasco that went on in, in the UK a few years ago when everybody went absolutely crazy for gin. Blue, yes, you're lovely. Um, everyone went crazy for gin and they were trying all the different gins to find the gin of all gins, the gin to rule them all. And I, I don't, I think a few people settled on a few favourites, but I, I think people ended up with several favourites for different reasons, for different um, for different occasions and perhaps that's kind of what's going on with cacao here so whilst I'm exclusively working with uh, Spirit of the Valley and I love it um, I kind of felt that I needed to make it clear that I'm not completely stuck on it um, I will try other cacaos and I will attend other ceremonies if I'm invited <laughs> I need to attend a hairdresser after you you crazy bird Calm down. I know you're excited. Just, just chill. Just, just chill. Just for a minute. Just say hello. So yeah, the. I just think that it's. That I'm minding myself here, more than telling other people to mind themselves. I watched my video a couple of times over yesterday, which I often do because I say things that I don't often hear initially, and then I hear myself later, and I think, ah, that's interesting, Louise. So. Um, there's, there's a trigger there for me, for sure, um, with the thought of seeing cacao in Tesco's, um, especially Tesco's because apparently they're not very dolphin or whale friendly, uh, which upsets me for other reasons. So there's a lot of me being upset at the moment. Um, I, I think the talk of bringing a sacred medicine into our supermarkets has me kind of on the fence, 50-50. I think it's wonderful to be sharing and I think each and every person will benefit from cacao if they open themselves up to it in some way or another because it is just such a widespread, such an amazing medicine. At the same time, I do feel very strongly that the, the ceremony behind it and the tradition behind it should not be lost blue. If you touch my cacao, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> Get off. Come, just come and sit on my shoulder. Come and sit on my shoulder. Good boy. No, see, see my cup now, that's it. Um, yeah, so I'm, I think it's, oh my God, that really went everywhere. All right, sorry, this is not, <laughs> this is not going very well. Do I need to get you some nuts? Do we need to get you some nuts? You're not having this. No, parrots don't drink cacao. So, Focus. Yes. Clever, but not quite. You are sneaky. No, it's under the table. Anyway, I've hidden it now. Let's see if you can work out where that's gone without touching the phone. Yeah, so I think actually uh, it's, it's kind of striking a balance. Maybe that's what I was fearful of that the balance was not going to be met or struck. 
uh, we live in a modern day society and more than ever the western world needs healing and we need to reconnect and whilst cacao is not um, a European medicine um, I I think that she wants to be known and it's up to us to share her and not keep her secret uh, but I think she did. I didn't even touch you <laughs> it's like having a toddler in the house I'm angry but I don't know why I'm angry yes yeah, stop they're quite robust they they throw themselves off things um so yes blue this is my punishment for not letting it get off for not letting you have cacao right just calm down so where was I? i've lost my trail of thought now um yeah i just think we need healing and we need to connect and i think cacao is a really good way of doing that so i just i hope that the mindfulness around it would not be lost and I think that's where my trigger is, really. There's something in me somewhere. I lost my way a bit, I think, and I need to work that. I need to take that to session. There's something about me losing my way slightly and feeling lost. And feeling like I'm not really getting it. And one of my big things, I'm going to be, this is my, I'm here in all authenticity right now. One of my things is um, being a jack of all trades and a master of none. And there's a part of me that really wants to be a master, not a master of other people, but a master of a skill or an art. And I never feel like I really quite make it. Maybe parrot wrangling is my thing. Because, you know, we've got you, haven't we now? Yeah. This is, this is dopey parrot. <laughs> um... So yeah, maybe that's maybe that's something that I need to look at. Uh, maybe I need to ask more questions, be more inquiring. But that was kind of where that post came from, I think, yesterday, that video that I was musing over. Um, and it kind of, I, I thought about the commoditization of cacao and how, how expensive it seems to have become, having spoken to quite a few people. And are there people the other side of the bridge um, who are standing between us and the farmers, not to stop us, but to take a cut of profit, which is why it's become so expensive. Is it the fact that it's, it's costing farmers more to um, keep their crops pure if they are purists? Um, there are lots of questions I'd, I'd really, I think I'd like to maybe uh, write to the farmer that I've been in touch with him, ask him, ask him more questions. Um, it's just, he, I'd need a translator either side, so it takes quite a long time. And there's quite a lot of energy and effort that's involved. So, yeah. Um, what am I with today? I am with Parrot, Spirit of Parrot. And what are you teaching me, Blue? Because you're you're being very present today um what are you teaching me so blue's actually been quite a healing influence on the household um for those of you who've been following us for quite a long time you will remember our lovely maui who we sadly lost in november way before his time and we miss him dreadfully maui was um a magnificent green wing macaw um he was just lovely he, he was a bit of a bully though um blue is a different kettle of fish altogether you're gonna jump you're gonna go over there go to your perch do you want to go over there do you want to go off you go then okay don't decide you want to go over there now so blue has been a very healing influence on our house we um i i me re, me really um, decided I couldn't bear to look at the empty aviary outside uh, which is right next to where I work and I had patients in tears and I was in tears and my partner was into everyone was just so devastated so um, Blue's just kind of landed in our lives and actually he is such a good little boy um, apart from when he's trying to steal my drinks and 
sticking his tongue in my ear and up my nose and things. Very nice of you, but humans don't do that. Not often anyway. Um, so, yeah, what am I with? I, I think... What am I with? I'm with trying to be a bit more open today. I think trying to be a bit more... A bit more with seeing what's possible, even more than I did yesterday, and a bit less with resistance, which I know I'm really good at. Um, I, I think there's a part of me that doesn't really like change. There's a part of me that definitely in the shadows really likes to own stuff this is mine i'm doing it i'm the person doing it so i know that's that's a trigger for me um which i will work another layer of because i don't i don't particularly like it and i'm happy to admit i don't like it and i'm happy to admit that i've got it because actually it's a human aspect and if we're all completely honest with ourselves we can probably all relate to that uh so Yes, that's what I'm with today. And I thought it would be nice if Blue would let me to do a small exercise with cacao. And this is completely intuitive. I'm not really thinking this through. I've just come on here. Um, excuse the language, but I've hit the fuck it bucket. <laughs> I've gone. No, I, I need to start being a bit more present, really, because I'm... I'm really not good at that and I don't know why I'm hiding myself and that's another one of my things I hide myself I hide aspects of myself so I'm going to stop doing that and I'm going to be on here so I have with me don't you dare go for it hidden this is like a blue peter moment here's one I made earlier I have a lovely cup of cacao and I'm just going to Mm -mm. Mm. Very simple message. Be with love. Be with love. That's what she's told me today. Straight in. Be with love. And you're love, aren't you? So what does love mean? Love. Um... Unconditional kind of love. What does it mean to us? How do we love ourselves? Because that's the big one, isn't it? It's easy to love other people, but then what comes with that? When we tell ourselves we love other people, sometimes we become controlling, sometimes we become a morphed version of ourselves to fit in with that idea of what loving that individual person should be and it's interesting while I'm saying that cacao's like be mindful of the fact that that's also what you do when you love me it's very easy to become a morphed version of who we really are to sit in with what we think we should be to try and align with energy that we think we should be aligned to um so what is what is loving myself really and ask yourself the same thing what what does loving myself truly mean and for me loving myself is really setting down boundaries not being aggressive with them but sitting with the sword in my lap and drawing the line in the sand and saying this is this is my cut-off point and that I'm cool with that and if you're not that's okay too you know you're allowed to not be okay with it but just know that I am okay with it and that's how it's going to stay. <sighs> Loving myself, um, nourishing my body. I'm just about to embark on um, this. I'll be doing more posts on this. Alberto Violdo, um, some of you probably already are aware of him. He brought um, the lineage to the West from Peru. So the Keru Indians, he was really kind of the first uh, Westerner. Um, sorry blue i can't do everything i need more hands um to actually uh convey the medicine in a language that made sense to a western mind because they think very differently in peru like one of the, the amazing things is that they they see um time as being behind behind us rather than in front of us 
So we look ahead at time, but they feel it coming in behind us and forming us from behind. That's a whole other video. So anyway, I am embarking on this. Yes, Blue, it's very exciting. It's a big book. I've been waiting for this for a long time now. Alberto, not only is he a shaman, a teacher, uh, he also is an author and he has... I, he's been working on this for a while, I know, because he wrote a book on growing your body before he brought out the recipe book. And the recipe book I was waiting for. Um, initial thoughts. I spent several hours planning my week ahead with this book. Um, it's a whole thing about, you know, you can regenerate your body. You don't have to age the way we think that, you know, with this whole, oh, you're just getting older. You it, That's bound to happen. That's kind of like a societal curse almost, you know. We condemn ourselves to ill health and growing old and having problems and not being very happy. And I'm kind of trying really hard not to buy into that. So this whole this whole philosophy of this book is actually, no, you can regenerate your body. There are ways to do it. And he was very interested in why in Western society we get all these awful diseases and degenerative issues when cultures around the world, actually, other cultures don't. And all right, there are, there are many variables, so you can say, all right, they're, they're maybe not exposed to the chemicals we're exposed to. And of course, no, they're not. And we are exposed to chemicals and it's horrible. And I wish we had a choice in it. I wish that there was more choice where we can actually say, no, do you know what? I don't want any of that because do you want any of that? I don't. No. Anyway, the the cookbook. So I've I spent a long time planning. This is this is one sheet of planning. And it's all right, it's just a bit of paper, but it's cool. And another sheet of planning. So this is hours and hours of me sitting, preparing, going through what I have in the cupboards already, deciding which dishes, because it's three dishes a day um, for, a week, for a week. And um, you can either just repeat the week over and over or you can keep picking different ones. But it's quite intensive. You have to ferment your own things. You have to create your own sauces and dips, get off no don't destructive boy leave it off come on over here hello come and sit in the camera it's nice people want to see a parrot so it's initial thoughts time consuming and very expensive if you don't already have all of your ingredients there's a lot of um supplementary kind of thing so lots of mushrooms i noticed lots of mushroom supplements um kombu uh ooh, all sorts of um what else is on there there's loads of stuff um i can't see i can't see because i've got a parrot on the table anyway lots of supplements turkey tail cordyceps chaga reishi ashwagandha lion's mane nutritional yeast um, rhodiola powder, I've never even heard of that. Activated charcoal, bacopa powder, um, all sorts of incredible things that I've never really thought about before. But the, the recipes look really nice and they sound really good. You know, you don't eat the paper, you eat the food. Get off. Thank you. So, I haven't started it yet, but I'm waiting for these amazing ingredients. So I'm going to just kind of reorganise my cupboards. I'm not very good at reorganising kitchens. Um, I'm being generally organised, so this is kind of a new thing for me. A new kind of, in the new year, I'm going to be more organised. And I'm going to look after me and my family a bit more because I've been lazy. And I don't mind admitting that either. I'm trying to run a business. I have an 18-month-old. I'm trying to start another business up. We have him. It's like having another kid. Um, obviously, we have family commitments. We want to see friends. Uh, we're running a house. Uh, my partner works very long hours and he works very hard so when you sort of factor all that in the extra time that we have or the spare time we have isn't all that much um, so this is a commitment and I kind of think well if we want change then we can't just kind of click our fingers and go well why hasn't it happened yet I've asked for it what's going on it doesn't I don't really think it works like that um, sometimes if you ask for stuff you get it but actually you know the universe kind of says well what are you prepared to invest you know I'll I'll bring it to you but this this isn't like a 
a vending machine that never charges money. It's like you can't keep asking for stuff and expect it to keep coming. You have to put some work in and some commitment in yourself. So but with that in mind, that's kind of what I've decided to do is invest some time and some money in myself. If you eat the table, I'm going to be in so much trouble. And my family. Uh, so I don't know how Matt's going to take it yet. Because he quite likes meat. He's um, quite a... Matt and I are like... I'm the chaos to his order and he's the order to my chaos. Um, I'm definitely the spiritual nut job of the pair of us. He is the technician. He is Mr. DIY. He's brilliant. He's very logical, very brilliant mind. Um, we work quite well together, but... Um, I haven't broken the news to him that there's not going to be meat. And he might be okay with it. He might not be. But um, it's for his own good, so hopefully he'll see this. And Matt, this is for your own good. And, well, you already eat better than we do, don't you? So I'm, my finger is not food. This is a baby parrot. Feed it. Get off. Stop it. So, yes, that's kind of my plan. So be with love. Be with love more. Um... And kind of less resistance. If you notice resistance, uh, think into it. So where is my resistance? Uh, what, what is it? Where's it come from? What's it about? What's it trying to teach me? Because whenever we, whenever we um, experience resistance and... Thank you for that. Whenever we experience resistance, there's always something there for us. There's something to look at. So... Rather than getting frustrated and sort of going into more resistance, kind of ask it, what do, what do, I, what do you need? Resistance, what do you need from me? So that you can, you can flow, you know, and become something else rather than resistance. Uh, and my resistance is about ownership and I know there's something in me that I'm not fully owning. So... I can't own anything else, but I'm also scrabbling at stuff as well. So sort of there's a, a subconscious, no, it's mine, I have to have it, and it's just go. Oh. Um, yeah, so that's, um, that's kind of where I'm feeling I need to take my personal work next. Um, so my colleagues, who I have so much love and respect for, along with our mentors and our teacher um, who is taking us on this current medicine wheel. Because uh, you can go round and round and round. You don't have to do it just once, you know. Um, but someone's going to have a lot of fun with me, I think. Which, you know, good luck to whoever, which one of you, whoever ends up with me working this. <laughs> no, they're all very good. They're all very good. We've been trained very well. So, yeah, I'd, I'd be, again, always interested to hear um, if you've got cacao with you, what is she telling you today? What's the message? It's very, it was a very simple thing. I can't do like a, a concentrated exercise like I did yesterday or meditation because I've got him with me. And um, I like parrots. They, they are so stunningly beautiful. It's a shame the camera is not really picking up how gorgeous his colours are. Um, every single feather is iridescent and it is just magnificent and it is just nature saying look at me I've got this I've got this to perfection I mean if someone if someone came to me and said like you know whoever the creator god whoever you want to call it him she they it whatever um, I'm thinking I might make this thing with feathers and whopping great feet so it can hold on branches and a huge beak and some big black lines on their face and a big black bit under their chin um, with a massive long tail. Um, I'd be like, you friggin' joking, aren't you? That is never going to work. And yet, somehow, nature always makes it work. If in doubt, always look to nature. That's what I say. Even when people are decorating their houses and they're having like a conflict of colours, look at nature. Look at what she does because she never, ever gets it wrong. Even with those weird little mole things that can't sit, you know, those skinless moles that scrabble around and get a bit angry at each other and they've got the weird star nose. Even them, even though they're really weird, they're kind of really cute. 
<laughs> so nature never gets it wrong, ever. She just knows. The whole, the whole balance and reciprocity between beings, between living organisms is just phenomenal. I don't even know how I got onto that, but anyway, that that's those are my feelings on parrots as well. Just in case anyone was uh, interested, are you happy now? Happy parrot. So, yeah, I I will do another guided session as soon as I can from my log cabin again. So I actually really enjoyed doing that yesterday. Um, just kind of being mindful about how cacao speaks to your body on a cellular level, and I think we're far too quick to kind of go oh, on an energetic level. What is she telling? And of course, it's still an energetic way of working because we are energetic beings, but on a very physical level and on the medicine where we'd be sort of saying that serpent on the physical, the, the level of cells and hormones and neurons and things, what, what's actually going on? What's my body telling me? And what are the things that are interacting with my body telling me as well? So maybe that's a good place to start, grounding ourselves, being with our bodies, planting our feet firmly on the floor and asking, what am I with and what do I need? Yeah. So anyway, um, like I said, if um, yesterday, I tried to say it today, but I got distracted by parrots. I'm very interested to hear your experiences, your thoughts. Um, I am here to be completely open about... Um, being a human being um, in my authenticity, I'm not going to apologise for all my faults and flaws. I'm neither am I going to waltz around in a lovely white dress because white's really not my colour. Um, it doesn't do anything for me; it washes me out. So, um, I kind of keep it fairly real. <clears throat> I try really hard to keep my feet firmly planted on the floor, and I will f and blind occasionally. Um. It's not an aggression, it's just how I express myself sometimes. And I think we need to be cool with that. You know, we we just need to go, well, everybody's an individual and they're, they're perfectly within their right to express themselves in whatever way they need to express themselves. And if it doesn't align with how I feel they should be expressing themselves, then maybe I need to look at something in me because I'm putting how I feel someone should express themselves or behave on them. And maybe that's maybe that's my stuff anyway um as always i'm rambling i'm the rambling parrot shaman <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i've got a little bit of time i'm gonna spend some time with blue um i'm gonna try and drink my cacao in peace and quiet but i'm gonna have to hide under the table i think and i will check in with you guys again very soon um when i have something more specific and potentially more valuable to add <laughs> Uh, as always, wishing you a wonderful Tuesday. Uh, go outside, let the wind blow the cobwebs out, get the water on your face. It's cold, it's damp, it's grey, but you know what? It's it's still an element, it's still part of living, part of being on this earth. It can't all be sunshine and roses. Um, sometimes it is the uh, the cold and the bleakness and the quiet and the stillness that we need to pay attention to. So go out, do sit spot, sit by your favourite tree or in your favourite spot on the ground and just notice what's around you. And practice gratitude. I didn't do gratitude today. I'm grateful for Blue and all his healing that he brings and the fun. And that's what I was going to say. Parrots, I love them because they're so magnificent. And yet their, their lesson, among many of their lessons, is uh, never take yourself too seriously. You can be magnificent, but never take yourself too seriously. Because you don't need to. Do you, Blue? No. <laughs> Pertinent point, clearly. Get off my hair. You can't... Stop it. Right, I'm going to go, because this is going to descend into chaos really fast. So, everybody have a wonderful day. Um... <clears throat> Thank you again for joining and thank you again for staying with me through all my rantings and ramblings and ravings. And we both wish you a magical Tuesday and uh, a magical afternoon and a restful evening. Lots of moon eye.
and uh, yeah, speak soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>